to take a picture like that. That is awesome class. news. Well, I'm recording Kay. now, dude. So, oh, we've got a couple of things I'm to recording. talk about. Can, can you on the Idaho right? Medical Choice Act, question. we did not get enough signatures to uh, get yes, medical cannabis question. on the ballot, but we are reintroducing the petition to legalize medical marijuana in our state this month. I'm also looking for co-legislation to introduce the Idaho Medical Choice Act as legislation with co-sponsors. So if you know any politicians that are pro, we need them. We need them to co-sponsor the Idaho Medical Choice Act so that we have it in the legislation and from us. Um, we need more gatherers. We need more circulators to help get these signatures. There are a lot of people who support cannabis in our state. I'm pretty sure you guys all know that, right? So it's just a matter of getting the signatures. Everybody knows 20 people, and all it takes is 20 signatures on one petition. If all of you guys got that, then we'd be on a good start. So look for us in June. We're going to be throwing a kickoff party, and it's going to be a nice barbecue somewhere where we can all hang out. And I need as many of you circulating as possible so that we can change these freaking ridiculous laws that are just hurting all of us. <laughs> Second of all, Boise's Hope Fest is coming up. It's our second annual Hemp Fest that yeah! we're using as education in our city. We need your help throwing it. It's going to be an Ann Morrison Park this year, one day event. We're expecting 5,000 people, guys. <laughs> Last year we said we were expecting 1,000 because we really were, and the police estimated between two and 4,000 on our first year. We have a lot of good speakers lined up. We've got bands confirmed. Some of your bands are going to include Tricada, Actual Depiction, Bucket, Pause for the Cause, we have Tom Chapman, and we are still looking to confirm Voice of Reason again because they were awesome. <laughs> we are accepting samples. If you are a musician or a speaker or some other form of entertainer, please go to IdahoHopeFest.com and submit what you'd like to share with us so that we can decide exactly what our lineup is going to be on September 30th. We need as much help throwing this festival as possible. We did it all off of vendor fees and private donations last year and people who volunteered and really worked their asses off to have the first Hemp Fest in Boise. Those of you that did that, thank you a, a bunch. I know that you guys are here and I appreciate you and love you. <laughs> and please come back and help us again. We really love seeing a good turnout like this. Hope Fest was amazing and we need to make sure that everybody's there. We're going to do some fun stuff to promote it. So look for different events such as the Flick Your Bick where we are collecting empty lighters and Miss Sarah Caldwell over here has been collecting them so that we can build a nice big legalized thing out of our recycled lighters because we all throw away a lot of Bix, right? Woo! <laughs> we also are going to be looking to have some sort of flash mob to promote Hope Fest. Those of you that are interested in doing so, please go to our web page on Facebook and let us know that you would like to help out. We also have some other promotional stunts planned that are a little bit more secretive, but we'll ask you for your help when they get here. And we really appreciate you guys coming out. Remember that acts of civil disobedience are you know, our own responsibilities. Police have been really respectful to us, so let's be respectful to them, please. And thank you for coming out here, guys. You guys are freaking fantastic. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 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 yeah! All right, so we're at about 4.15 here, and I just want to put out a thank you to our wonderful law enforcement officers that are here to protect us today. So let's give them a round of applause, you guys. Thank you for your hard work and effort. Yeah. Remember, there is the Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Check them out. It's called LEAP. Many people that you may work with may be a part of this already. Um, in saying so, I also would like to mention that in passing medical marijuana, you have to vote for it. So register to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you don't get your choice, your voice, or anything else. So remember to register to vote. We have a table set up down here in the corner. And uh, if you want to make a donation to help out with Compassionate Idaho or the Hope Festival, 
or even next year's GMM, there is a bucket on the table. Feel free to do so. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our next speaker, Derek Fleet. What's up, Boise? Yeah. How's everybody feeling? Excellent. All right. I got one question for you guys. I think your glasses are setting it off, Derek. Why not? Why not legalize it? There is no reason. There is no reason. So how many people die from alcohol? Way too many. How many die from, from tobacco? Four hundred thousand. How many die from pot? No. Peanut allergies. That's right, not a single person has died from smoking pot. So what time is it? 4.17. It's 4.17. We got three minutes. You guys ready? We are ready. <laughs> She's a 10-minute speaker. Okay, I'm going to introduce Cindy McClaskey.
I told my father at the time of his diagnosis 10 months ago that this was my chance to be able to help him. He told me he would consider. He went to his state president and he asked his state president if it would be okay for him to use this to help him with his illness. He was told no. He was told that using this because it was against the law would affect his eternal status. So he chose not to. He left two days ago and I know that things would have been different if he would have been able to use it. If he would have been in Oregon, he would have been able to, to use it. And it's, it's ridiculous that because of where you stand here or you stand here, you can or you can't from a legal standpoint. So it's very important that from here on to try to get this to patients who need it, who will not otherwise be able to acquire something safe, non-toxic, natural. We need to educate people. We need to respectfully open discussion with everybody, with our children, with our caregivers, with our lawmakers. We need to do this respectfully and go and find your information, find the truth. And with the truth that you can spread, that's where the awareness will come from and that is how we will be able to change these laws and help everybody. Thank you. So I wanted to say a little bit more about this petition. We really do need help getting your signatures, getting everybody's signatures, and using our voices is alleviating our fears. The more that we talk about this and we have these conversations and we explain to people why we feel the way we do, when we explain that it's medicine, when we explain that it used to be our nation's number one crop, and we let people know that this is not some drug that has been demonized, when we open these discussions, that is how we will change these laws. People need to understand that it is not the plant that has been demonized to them. They need the education to understand, to make informed decisions. When you guys give people facts about what is up with our plant, and it is a plant, um, please make sure that you encourage them to not only trust your word for it, but to research theirs. They need to do their research. Everybody needs to do their research. I learn new stuff every single day about our plant because our plant puts out new information every single day on all the different ways it can be used, and that's amazing. So we need to educate people about what can happen with this plant. We need to let them know that this can make it our dependency on petroleum non-existent. We need to let people know that we don't need to cut down the trees. We need to let people know that it is the strongest fiber on the planet. We need to let people know that they can build a house of it, out of it with limestone, makes concrete. It gets stronger year after year, earthquake resistant. They need to understand that it can be stronger than steel and is lighter than plastic. People need to understand that anything that's made petroleum-based can be made from our plants. They need to understand that the pharmaceuticals that they're taking, they don't need to take. There are a lot of people on pain pills. We had 37,000 deaths from pain pills in 2010. Is that okay? No! Is it okay for the doctors to prescribe you a billion different pills with all of the side effects included in a pamphlet that you get from your pharmacy when there is a natural, safe, non-toxic option for you? No. no! We need to start making them listen to us. They work for us. When we all band together and we let them know how we feel and why, the more we talk about this, the less they can ignore it. We need to change these laws. There are a lot of young people here, and you guys are the generation of activists. You're the generation with us that's activists. And the more of us that participate in changing these laws and helping these discussions and sharing the information, the quicker this will happen. I believe that with 18 months to circulate the petition instead of 14, we're gonna have two summers we have been lucky enough that the Weed Blog will be donating a website to Compassionate Idaho. We are lucky enough that we are starting to receive private funding. We're lucky enough that people are coming out in support like this instead of being apathetic and sitting at their houses. So thank you for coming out.
A lot of you traveled a long distance. Yeah. 80 miles. 80 miles, wow. And they say Idaho doesn't have support. BSU Public Policy poll shows that 74% of us support medical marijuana for terminally ill and seriously ill patients. 60% approval and over means that it gets voted through once it's on the ballot, guys. All we got to do is get it there. 41% of us support it for full-on legalization. With education, do you realize how much you guys could transform that number? Idaho needs educated. If you want to change these laws, it starts with education. And it starts with having registered voters. When people sign the petition and they're not registered to vote, it automatically takes away their voice. The county clerks have thrown out about 3,000 signatures, if not more, because people weren't registered to vote. If you have moved, if you have had your name, if you have not voted in the last four years, please go to the table and register to vote. There's elections for your local people May 15th.